our work so far, we've learned what the correct sight picture is, and how to get that picture into the sights of the rifle and hold it, whether you're prone, sitting, kneeling, or standing. Today, we take up the most important thing in rifle marksmanship, the trigger squeeze. By that term, trigger squeeze, I mean the process you go through to bring your trigger back and fire your rifle. You know, when I was learning to shoot the rifle, my coach was an old sergeant who had fought in everything from Santiago to the Argonne. When we got to trigger squeeze, he told me something that has stayed with me ever since. Soldier, the trigger squeeze is the heart and soul, the beginning and the end of all good shooting. With it, you can part the hair of any guy you're after as far as you can see. Without it, you might as well throw away your rifle and start heaving rocks, because you'll do a hell of a lot better. <laughs> that old sergeant knew what he was talking about. You can be a ball of fire in your sighting and aiming. You can be red hot in your positions. But if you can't teach that trigger finger to squeeze Squeeze, squeeze. Well, you better get yourself a supply of rocks, as my old sergeant suggested, because you're going to need them. Now, there's nothing difficult about the trigger squeeze. It's just a question of applying a smooth, increasing pressure to the trigger until the rifle fires. The trick is to apply that pressure so smoothly and so steadily that you can't tell when the rifle is going to fire. If you can't tell when the rifle is going off, you can't jump or jerk or, as we say in the Army, you can't flinch. Have you ever seen an untrained person fire the rifle? This is what happens. He gets all set, gets into position, draws what he thinks is a fine bead on the target, and then closes both eyes and yanks the trigger. And he wonders why he never hits the target. Remember this. It's instinctive, natural, for every one of us to close both eyes and tighten up when we fire a rifle. If we know when that rifle's going off. But when you do that, you spoil your aim. You not only miss the bullseye, but you may miss the whole target. Now, there's only one way to beat nature on this proposition. And that is to squeeze the trigger so smoothly and to increase the pressure so steadily that you don't know when the rifle's going off. If you don't know the rifle is going off, you can't close your eyes and flinch and spoil your aim before the shot is fired. The worst you can do is bat your eyes after the rifle is fired. And that doesn't hurt anything because the shot is already on its way. Simple, isn't it? Now, let's see exactly how you go about learning this trick in your dry shooting. You practice the trigger squeeze in all positions, but you start out in the prone position with a sandbag because that's the steadiest, and it lets you concentrate on the sight picture and squeeze until you get the hang of it. First, you take the prone position and adjust yourself until the rifle points at the target without effort. Then the coach fits the sandbag. The coach takes his position and the exercise begins. Cock your rifle, hold your breath and aim. When you get the correct sight picture, take up the slack. My trigger slack we mean the play between the trigger's forward point and the point where you first feel resistance. Take it up decisively. And while you're taking up the slack, you're starting your trigger squeeze. It's all one action of your finger, working by itself, independent of the rest of your hand. You press smoothly, 
straight to the rear, and you increase the pressure steadily from start to finish. Your rifle has a fixed pull, say about four pounds. When you take up your slack, you take up part of that pull. Your constantly increasing pressure takes up the rest of it. And then the trigger gives, and the rifle fires. But follow through. Hold your position. Hold your aim, and continue your increasing pressure. I'll tell you more about that later. What I want you to get now is this. If you squeeze the trigger properly, you can't know when the rifle is going to fire, and therefore you won't be able to flinch. Do you all understand that? There's another mistake all of us make when we first start shooting the rifle. Practically everyone has a violent impulse to yank the trigger the instant the sights come in correct alignment with the target. The beginner is tempted, particularly in the kneeling and standing positions where the unsteadiness is marked. Your sights move a little, side to side, up and down. Finally, they come to bear exactly on the bull's eye. So, at that instant, you jerk the trigger. And this is what happens. You literally jerk your rifle clear off the target. You may not see it, because both of your eyes will probably be shut tight, and your muscles taut and braced for the shock. But whether you see it or not, the result is the same. A wild shot. There's only one way to get hit and only hits count on the battlefield. And that is to squeeze the trigger. Now you've seen what happens when you jerk the trigger instead of squeezing it. I'm going to show you why it happens. Let's assume that I'm shooting at a target 500 yards away. I've got my sights lined up on the left edge of the bullseye. Since the range is 500, I would be using a B target with a 20-inch bullseye. If I fired now, I'd hit the left edge of the black. Now I'm going to move the rifle 20 inches to the right. And let's assume that I've moved the butt and the muzzle exactly the same distance. In other words, my line of aim now is exactly parallel to my line of aim before I moved the rifle. If I'd fired then, I would have creased the left edge of the bull. Who can tell me where I'd hit if I fire now? William? It had creased the right edge of the bull, sir. Right. Do you all understand that? I can move this rifle back and forth 20 inches. And if I fired it anywhere within that space, I'd still get a bullseye as long as I kept my lines of aim parallel. I move the rifle 10 inches to the left again, still keeping my parallel line of aim. If I fired it now, I'd hit the bullseye dead center. But now watch this. I'm going to keep the butt in place and move the muzzle of the rifle just one inch. But stays the same as it is. I've moved the muzzle only. One inch. If I fired now, where would it hit? Norton? It would go off to one side, sir. I don't know just where it would hit. Neither do I know just where it would hit. But I can tell you this. It would miss the center of the bullseye by about 35 feet. Get that, 35 feet. The point is, when you jerk the trigger, you twist the rifle off the line of aim. When your sights are on the target, you can move your whole rifle from side to side, the width of the bullseye, and still hit it, if the rifle always stays parallel to the line of aim. But. If the butt of the rifle remains stationary and you jerk the muzzle off to one side as much as an inch, your bullet will miss the target by about 15 feet at 200 yards. 
by 21 feet at 300 yards or by 35 feet at 500 yards. A half inch movement of the muzzle means a miss by 17 or 18 feet at 500 yards. A quarter inch movement will cause a miss by eight or nine feet. And even a movement as small as a sixteenth of an inch may make you miss the bullseye. That's why it's so important to take the correct position so that your rifle and your whole body aim directly at the bullseye. Then, when you squeeze the trigger so smoothly that you don't know when the rifle's going off, the strike of your bullets will be changed only by the natural parallel movements of your body and your shots will be good. The unsteadiness caused by the natural movements of your body does not seriously affect the aim if you squeeze the trigger correctly. Okay, let's see if you got the point so far. What happens if you jerk the trigger? Harris? It throw your rifle muzzle off the target. If you were shooting at a guy, you wouldn't hit him. Right. Remember it, and you'll get plenty of bullseyes. And guys, too. What should you do? Kerinsky? Sir, you should squeeze the trigger so that you won't know when the rifle will go off. Good. Tell me when to squeeze it. O'Neill. You take your position, you hold your breath, you aim, you take up your slack, and then you pull the trigger. Do you pause after you've taken up your trigger slack before you begin to squeeze it? Austin? No, sir. Taking up uh, on the slack starts you on the squeeze. Right. And you go on steadily applying pressure until the hammer falls. Do you flinch and spoil your aim if you squeeze the trigger properly? Marshal. No, sir. Why not? Because you don't know when the rifle's going off. Check. Here's all there is to it. Every time you squeeze a trigger, be sure to do these things. Apply a steadily increasing pressure and continue smoothly until the rifle is fired. I know this seems easy. It is, but it must be practiced over and over. You must develop the habit of thinking only of the sight picture. You must practice until the trigger finger works independently, as if it had a mind of its own. Are there any questions? Sir, how much time should you take to squeeze the trigger? The expert takes about two seconds to fire a well-aimed shot. He can do this because he knows his job so well that the whole procedure is almost automatic. Speed comes with practice, and he follows through. Here's what we mean by follow through. After the hammer falls, go right on for an instant doing what you were doing. Hold your breath and aim and apply your steadily increasing pressure on the trigger. This helps overcome the natural tendency to let go, which disturbs the sight alignment. All right, we've shown you how to squeeze the trigger and follow through. And we have a neat little way of checking up on you. With each shot, we have you call out where you think the bullet is going to hit. This is calling the shot. And you do it the instant after the shot is fired. It's a cinch to call your shots if you're squeezing the trigger properly. For then your eye is open and you can see where your sights are aligned when the rifle fires. Of course, if you jerk the trigger, or close your eyes and flinch, you won't be able to call your shot because you won't know where your sights are aligned when the rifle went off. The point is that only the man who squeezes the trigger properly can tell where his shot should hit. Here's the system we use to call our shots. Most of you know by now that a hit here is a five. And in this circle, a four, and in this one, a three. Anywhere else on the target is a two. A miss is a zero. Now every time you fire a shot, 
Imagine a large vertical clock face on your target with a bullseye in the center. This gives you a simple system of calling your shots. For example, suppose at the instant your rifle goes off, you see your sights aligned so that the bullet will hit here. Then you will call your shot a four at 12 o'clock because it's in the four circle and in the direction of 12 o'clock. A hit here would be a three at seven o'clock. Here, a two at two o'clock. And here, a four at 11. And here, a pinwheel five. On the range, you call your shots at slow fire. You and the coach compare the called shot with the actual shot to see if you know where you are aiming when the piece is fired. In dry shooting, there's no way to check whether or not you call your shots correctly, but it's to your advantage to do so. It helps you to develop the habit of concentrating on the sight picture and forgetting the trigger finger. It helps you to develop the habit to call the shot as you'll do on the range. Now in the trigger squeeze exercise, as in all the others, the coach must check every step. He sees that the sights are properly blackened and the sling correctly adjusted. He checks the pupil's position. If it's wrong, he tells him why and corrects it. He keeps an eye on the pupil's back during aiming to make sure he holds his breath properly. He sees the pupil takes up the slack and squeezes the trigger properly. He watches his eye to make sure he does not blink. When the pupil is actually firing the rifle, you can chalk up a flinch for him any time you see his eye close. The flincher closes his eye just before the explosion. Therefore, you can see it. If he doesn't flinch, you won't see his eye close because your eyes and his will close involuntarily at the sound of the explosion. Are there any questions about anything we've covered today? Okay. You're going to hear these things over and over again from your coaches, your squad leaders, your platoon leaders, and me. You're going to hear them and practice them until they become so much a part of you that you couldn't forget them if you wanted to. If you acquire these correct habits in your preparatory work, you'll find that the actual firing on the range is as simple as shooting fish in the kitchen sink. To be a good shot, you must dry shoot or squeeze off a hundred or more shots for every round fired and with as much care. Remember, skill in squeezing the trigger correctly is the best life insurance you can get. <laughs>